Adam got this little gerbil stuffed and uh, we have a four ball which I'm included in it every Sunday morning against uh, three very good friends of mine I'll name them Nicky Sharp is my partner and uh, Jim Jim Boys and Les Hodges and we play for this little fella every Sunday morning it's just a kind of a, a laugh but you swear we were playing for the British Open. London has a population of close to 10 million people, making it one of the largest cities in the world. The chaotic pace of life in the capital is a far cry from the tranquility that can be found just eight miles from the centre at the third oldest golf club in England. And you're about to find out that this is no ordinary golf club. We'll be taking a look around the London Scottish Golf Club, speaking with some of its members, and I'll be joined for a conversation about friendship and golf by my friend of over 20 years, who happens to be celebrating his 60th birthday, Mr. Damien Rocker. Sorry, I mean Looker. I'll explain later. Before we go any further, there is an unusual dress code that needs to be adhered to, and I'm not too sure Damien's going to be too happy. Mate, you know I promised you a few surprises this weekend? Yeah. Well, here's the first one. Can you just, for the audience's sake, what team do you support? Everton. I'm afraid, me. you've got to wear red, so get that on. So Damien, friendship and golf, we've been, we've been mates for over 20 years due to meeting when we joined the golf club at similar times. Yeah. Two other mates that we still hang around with, again, met at that golf club. Your 60th this weekend. Don't remind me. <laughs> Steve's 50th a few weeks ago, mine a few years back. And all of it has been, it's sort of, almost like golf is the glue that holds it all together you know it's always something that you can because we're not members of that club anymore are we no no we're not there yeah yeah so but we still meet up and it's always it's always golf that brings us back together. together yeah which is great and it and the friendship you know the friendships are constant isn't yeah. it which is which is important you know during your high points during your low points but by arranging games of golf yeah on a regular basis just to have a chat you always feel better yeah just you know to you know, share yeah, you know, to share what's been happening and what's affecting your families and your businesses, etc. And it, and, it, and, and it never really matters how, how well we play either, does it? No, not at all, mate. No. Absolutely. And uh, We do a bit of wind, you know. Oh, we do. It would be rude not to. <laughs> Charles. My name is Tommy Ty. I come from the west of Ireland. 
Uh, I've been a member here um, since 1985. I uh, was captain in 93 and also captain in 2018. Friendship is second to none and anybody who comes here, societies and uh, guests, they always come back. When a single golfer comes up, we, we have a policy here that nobody is ever left in the club. And even if we have to split up our four balls, we always bring in that um, new member or a guest who, who might come to play. It's such a friendly club and uh, we never leave anybody out. Whoever comes in here is, uh, is treated the same as a member. I think one of the strengths of the golf club is, is kind of the uniqueness of it. Um, any golf club I've kind of ever been involved with is, there's always a certain element of clique or people who always play with the same people or, you know, they've come here because their friend's a member. You, you, it just doesn't exist here. In fact, it's frowned upon. So every week you'll play with somebody different. You could be playing with a scratch handicap golfer, you could be playing with somebody off 54. And that's kind of the beauty of it because you, you end up speaking to people who you wouldn't normally speak to from every possible walk of life. There's kind of weird, unwritten things that kind of happen within the golf club. There's, they're people that I class as really good friends of mine and I don't know what they do for a living. I have no idea, I've never asked. But I can tell you where they went on holiday, I can tell you what football team they support, I can certainly tell you who they want to win the Open. And that's kind of what makes this place kind of different. Um, it, it has the feel of, I, I liken it to a rugby club, where the fact that you feel as if you're all in it together. Um, the red probably helps with that as well, because we all wear the same stuff, we all feel part of a, of a team, if you like. And that's what it feels like, it's, it's not, it's not comparable to other golf clubs. I think a testament to our friendship, mate, the fact that I've got you wearing red as an Evertonian. Yeah. Oh, you, so no. usually, I think it's your colour. No one's going to see it, are they? <laughs> <laughs> I think... I'm going to get slaughtered for this. What a, what, a, what a loyal friend. Right. A beautiful golf hole, this, you know. It really is. Yeah. Again, 285 par four, though, so, you know, just about being super tight, isn't it? Yeah. You going three wood? <laughs> My a mini driver, mate. Yeah. Which should be. Yeah. Lovely shot. Well done. Yeah, it's still doing well this thing. Yeah. Very consistent, isn't it? Good shot. The lad's warmed up. You're flying, you are. Nicely played, Dan. Oh, oh, majestic. Well done. Thank you. You said I recorded yours, not mine. Yeah, well, in terms of golf, mate, just we're looking at not just creating memories on the on the golf course, but obviously creating lifelong memories. You know, I suppose when, so, yeah. Yeah, when we're celebrating birthdays, going back to my 50th. Yeah, yeah. Went to Dublin. Which was, well, that'll lead me into sort of the I've suggested they call you Damien Rocker or Damo. <laughs> but the whole Rocker thing came from uh, a night out in Dublin, yeah, yeah, on your 50th. And then again, that, that whole trip was based around some great golf. Yeah. But we all, I don't know whether, unfortunately or fortunately, you know, we got a little bit worse for wear in Dublin one night. And uh, I requested a song, which was Mr. Brightside. And unfortunately, the, the guy who was on the guitar couldn't hear what I was saying. And although I tried several occasions to correct him and say, no, it's Lucker. He insisted on calling you Damien Rocker. That was which it. I actually prefer that, to be yeah. honest with you, mate. And it stuck. I think you should uh, perhaps look to get that changed by deed, Paul. 
Oh, that was a bit heavy. It might still get there. The it. thing is, the rocker thing certainly suits it's your still... lifestyle, mate. <laughs> if only. If only. Dream on, Damien. Can you believe how nice it is? End of November. Yeah, yeah. No wind, no yeah. rain. Just absolutely perfect condition. Worth pointing out as well, dry underfoot. Yeah. And, uh, fair do. Did you organise this as well? I organised everything for you, mate. It's his birthday. One has standards. So, 2.30, 2.40 par, par three and? Yeah. Some really challenging par threes in the early early stages of this. Yeah, that's course. Th but, uh, that's the second one we've played at way over 220. Yeah. Well, I would struggle to think of a sport other than golf where you get such a mixture of different people. Here we've got all different ages. We've got plumbers, we've got scaffolders, we've got taxi drivers, we've got teachers, we've got middle managers, we've got accounts, we've got QCs. And we have a roll up almost every single day. So golfers know they can come up here at a particular time, come into the clubhouse, and then everyone will walk round to the tee. We don't have tee times. You'll put balls out of the hat, and you've got a game whenever you want any day of the week. And I think that's quite a special thing. The golf's important here, but so is the social side. Um, and it means that over the years, people firstly get to know a lot of people, but then they get really quite deep friendships, as well as the laughter and the camaraderie. Um, it's very much a place where you can belong. It's a little kind of oasis where people can come, they know they can have a conversation, and people are supported here, and I think that's something that's really quite special. I think with you being 60, I thought we'd better have a sit down after five, every five <laughs> holes and make sure that you, you know... You, you <coughs> Thanks, mate. Yeah, I need it. We, we were both um, like competitive sports people, I think that's fair to say. Yeah. I mean, I will point out at this stage, you've played at Wembley twice. You know, we can't miss that bit out. I didn't get there, unfortunately, <laughs> anywhere near it. But uh, I think, again, golf, what interests me, as you know, we've talked about friendship, we've talked about memories, and it's that bit about being able to stay and competitive. I don't know whether that's even the right word, but as a sports person, you've always got that little bit that of something. A little bit of an edge that you want to, yeah. you want to do your best. But as, a, as an age thing, we're, we're, we're knackered in terms of most sports. I might get at snooker, I could probably squeeze a game. But <laughs> yeah. with golf, you, just, you can carry on. Of course, yeah. Well, you know, I look at some of the guys, you know, at my club, you know, mm -hmm. it's playing into 80s, 90s. And yeah. you think, actually, you know, wouldn't it be great to yeah. still be act active and, you know, have that bond and a friendship. And, but on the, on the competitive sports, if we can just correct you on something. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned earlier about we met 20 years ago. We didn't. Mm. We didn't ask him no. 20 years ago. No. We asked him at over 30 years ago. We did, yeah. Because many people might not realise, but um, Andy was an extremely competitive sportsman. He was actually a first-year professional footballer, uh, and I had dealings with our local club, and he was a first-year pro there. Um, so just just to clarify that for our yeah, uh, yeah, no, you're, 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 I was a young you're a soccer, pl yeah, soccer, you're a soccer player, player. Yeah. yeah, soccer yeah. player. So. Um, but I reckon I recognised you when you invited me to your home. Yeah. Just 20 years ago. Yeah. You? Your hairstyle was slightly different. It was slightly different, yeah. In, yeah. That, in that I had some. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. think we were both doing very good in the air department, <laughs> to be fair. But yeah. Yeah, but it, I, was, I wasn't expecting a, a blonde curly. No, no. Yeah. No, yeah. M many wouldn't either. No. But I mean, I think, again, it's just... Uh, that, that was purely coincidence, that chance meeting. And then, yeah. like I said, 10 years on. and. Here we are, mate, sat up on a, on a park bench, reminiscing. <laughs> I don't of know what, if that's good or yeah, bad. Of what, of what might have been. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like the season, we are very much in the autumn of our lives, but perhaps see ourselves as a couple of evergreens. This week's video was very different than not having my camera woman. meant it wasn't its usual high quality in the last conversation being out of focus. But in many ways it didn't matter, because hopefully the message was loud and clear. The true importance that a golf club plays in the community is very different than the debacles of Live Golf and the PGA. 
and is a million miles from the recent release and vulgarity of PIF payments. It really does annoy me as to how detached from reality these organisations are. Thankfully, we play golf for very different reasons. See you next week.